degrees in northern areas. We're so much, we're doubling that. We're at 35, 34 degrees in northern areas, back to closer to where we should be for this time of year. Temperatures are improving. 40 degrees at Kennedy Airport for a start temperature. 36 uh, is the start temperature in Islip, 42 toward Newark. This is all improving news. High temperatures tomorrow are right where they should be, 57, 58 around the area, even at 59 degrees in Morristown. It's a little breezy, but there's no big systems except for this little light shower that moves through. To time this thing coming out of the Great Lakes and moving across the area, we're basically looking at it to be uh, somewhere around daybreak tomorrow. That there'll be a quick sprinkle or a shower. Radar's showing there's not a lot of moisture to pick up with this, but it does get up and get through. Expect that there will be a quick moving sprinkle by about daybreak, and the clouds will kind of collect overnight tonight. It's a warmer night for us. In the day tomorrow, watching that low move by, there's a late clearing going on tomorrow with some early clouds, and it's a nice afternoon at 58 degrees. Mostly cloudy, a late shower at 40 degrees tonight for the day tomorrow. Expect those numbers come back up into the 50s, 58 degrees, early clouds, breezy and clearing for the number tomorrow night. Now, this is an improved number as well. Now we're out of the cold numbers. Good. Back to where we should be. Mostly clear skies, 42 degrees. We'll come back with a five-day plan, run you right into a nice Saturday on your weekend. We come back. Okay, that's good news. You like that. Right. Yeah. yeah. You betcha. Thanks, it's all Sam. good. As we continue, the rich get richer. J-Lo's mom hits the jackpot. Yeah, the least out of all that story is coming up. But first, protect yourself from vacation nightmares. Mm -hmm. See what you must know before buying travel insurance. Next on Eyewitness News. I'm Lauren Glassberg, surrounded by a bevy of beauties. They are ready for prom. The best part about what they're wearing? The price. The story coming up. It's now 5.30. Eyewitness News is back with your top stories. Police are now looking for two men wanted for raping and then robbing two women in Williamsburg, Brooklyn. Investigators say the men followed the victims home. One man forced his way inside an apartment while the other acted as a lookout. Deadly battles are taking place throughout Iraq today. At least five U.S. Marines have been killed since a crackdown in Fallujah began yesterday. 30 Iraqis were killed in today's skirmishes with British and Italian forces in other cities. And a rally about to get underway on the campus of the University of Connecticut. The UConn men's team won the NCAA championship last night. The women's team plays for the title tonight. If they win, the school could become the first in the country to have both championship basketball teams at the same time. And right now we want to update you on that breaking news that we brought you earlier. Brush fire burning on Staten Island. For that, let's go to Shannon Stone line of, mm. in Newscopter 7. And Shannon, that looks pretty intense there. It certainly is, Sade. Now, if you can see that road in the middle of your screen, literally seconds before you threw it to me, this fire just jumped at that road and you can see how quickly it has spread after jumping the road. So it is a very fast-moving fire. As we pull out, you'll see a lot of it has burned itself out. Fire department is on the scene here. You see them sort of on the top right side of your screen. But look at how much of this brush has burned. This is the area of Staten Island of Old Town. It's between Highland Boulevard and Father Capaneno Boulevard. But you can see an amazing amount burned and the high winds certainly hampering the efforts of the fire department. Reporting live over Staten Island, Shannon Stone, Channel 7, Eyewitness News. All right, thank you, Shannon. Our top story this half hour, a young family killed by fast-moving flames and firefighters who were powerless to help. A father, mother, and their four-year-old daughter were trapped. It happened in the family's apartment in Yonkers, as you saw on Eyewitness News during last night's newscast. Now, today, firefighters describing what it was like inside that building with the family just out of reach. Sandra Bookman at the scene for us tonight. Sandra? Bill, investigators here in Yonkers now say this, they ruled out arson, I should say. They say this was a sad, tragic accident. One thing they are still looking into is whether or not a second exit up on that third floor may have been blocked, either by household items or cut off by the heat. Today, the burned-out remains of the three-story apartment building stand as a grim reminder of three lives lost here, a mother, a father, and a four-year-old daughter. The wind whipped flames of a killer inferno to blame. The volume of smoke and heat and the flames coming out there were like a blowtorch. Though the Yonkers Fire Department insists it only took three minutes to respond to the call for aid Monday evening, the deadly fire had a big head start ignited in a first-floor apartment when a mattress propped against a wall came in contact with the stove and quickly spread. The entire uh, main stairwell in the building, which is your normal way of coming in and going out, became a chimney and a flue for the fire to travel upstairs. Um, 
Those stairs were being burnt out before we even got there. Apparently trapped in their third floor apartment, Mario Castellan, his wife Augustina, and their daughter, Ana Laura, perished. Still under investigation, why they couldn't get out. Right now we're, we're investigating. We do know that there was, a, there is a second means of egress, but why they didn't, why weren't they able to get out of the second means of egress is what's under investigation right now. Now, city code does require that second exit. Uh, we do know that there was another family on the third floor. They apparently were able to get out. Again, the department's simply not sure whether or not that second exit was blocked or whether or not perhaps it was simply too hot for the family that died to get out in time. We're live tonight in Yonkers. I'm Sandra Bookman, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. Thank you, Sandra. We are learning more about the controversial letter to a juror that proved to be the final blow in the six-month Tycho trial. The Associated Press quotes a police source who says the letter was written by a man who thought a mistrial had already been declared. It was sent to a woman identified as juror number four, who during deliberations sided with the defendants accused of looting the company. Police say the letter was angry but not threatening. The writer's name is not being released, and it was reportedly sent from Massachusetts. The exact contents of the letter have been sealed by a judge, and police say juror number four also received an intimidating phone call from another person. An investigation is underway. The American Civil Liberties Union, the ACLU, tonight suing the federal government at issue is the controversial no-fly list designed supposedly to fight terrorism. The list is compiled by the Transportation Security Administration. It's given to airlines with instructions to stop anyone who is on the list. Uh, the ACLU believes some people are wrongfully put on that list, and many innocent travelers who pose no threat of terrorism or pose no safety risk are being stopped and searched repeatedly. They are routinely subjected to humiliating treatment, um, regarded with suspicion and disdain by airline employees and security personnel. Among the seven plaintiffs in the ACLU's class action lawsuit, a retired minister, a college student, and a member of the military. Little is known about the government's no-fly list. We don't know how many people are on it or what the criteria is to get on or off the list. The Yankees season is already underway. The Mets will get started against the Atlanta Braves tonight. And for the Mets, they're hoping the season goes a whole lot better mm -hmm. than the last one. Geneva Abreu is with the team in Atlanta. Geneva? A whole lot better, Shade. Actually, the Mets are coming off back-to-back -back seasons of last-place finishes. They're also coming off their worst spring training in 24 years. But with all of that behind them, the Mets are just looking ahead and looking forward to winning games. Getting ready for opening night here in Atlanta. It's about food, family, and, of course, fans. I want my Mets to win, and I'm hoping... Uh, they get out of last place and take the National League East this year. A tall order for this revamped Mets team that opens the season against their hated division rivals. On the mound tonight, former Brave Tom Glavin, who looks to get the Mets started on the right track. You certainly want to go out and, and, and get off to a good start, but, you know, the first game in April, I don't know how much of a tone you can set or how much of a message you can send. Center fielder Mike Cameron is excited to kick off the season with his new team, especially at home in Atlanta. The opening day is always exciting. No matter, big league baseball, when you first start, it's, there's a lot of uh, anticipation, a lot of optimism, and um, there are a lot of uh, butterflies. Opening day is always special, even for the veterans. It's just like 12 for me now, so uh, it's, it's something I'm looking forward to. I'm, I'm excited to get the season started, and you, know, you can't help but uh, love opening day. You know, everybody's in first place. Isn't that the, the truth? Now, on a different note, Major League Baseball is considering selling advertising space, so to speak, on the players' uniform, a move that could generate an estimated $500 million in revenue for baseball. Now, you might remember the Yankees wearing those uh, Rico patches on their sleeves during their uh, recent trip to Japan to open the season. The Rico company sponsored the trip. The players even took a cut of the money they got. Now, one baseball purist I spoke to today sees that as sacrilege, and at least one Mets player is actually open to the idea. People already say we make too much money, so, uh, you know, I don't know. Is the owners going to make too much money now? So, uh, you know, whatever they do, that's they got the power, you know. I mean, we'll probably have another meeting about it sometime, but uh, yeah, I don't see any problem with it. Are you afraid of possibly looking like a NASCAR? <laughs> No, those guys are pretty sweet. I want to get one of those jackets because they're pretty big time. We don't want these guys crossing home plate, having somebody hand them a 
Pepsi, drink down the Pepsi. And <laughs> They're in the business of making money and 500 million is a lot of it. We'll be back at six with more from the Mets on this much anticipated 2004 season. For now, live from Atlanta, I'm Geneva Brady, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. All right, Geneva, thank you. We have some breaking news out of Iraq. The Pentagon now reporting a dozen Marines were killed in new fighting in Iraq today. We told you about the fighting earlier in Fallujah. A defense, defense official citing reports from the field that dozens of Iraqis attacked a Marine position near the governor's palace in Ramadi. A significant number of Marines were killed. That's where the initial reports. Now it might be up to a dozen, according to one official, speaking on condition of anonymity. Hmm. And we've got, of course, more on that coming up. Still ahead, caught between a rock and a hard place. Find out how a boy ended up getting stuck in a chimney. And our job cuts behind us. We've got the details coming up. I'm Jill Bennett, live with Amex. Those stories and much more on Channel 7 Eyewitness News. You're watching Channel 7 Eyewitness News. Nobody asks tougher questions, digs deeper, and uncovers more of the real story. Nobody covers your news like Eyewitness News. Nobody. In California today, it wasn't Santa Claus stuck in a chimney. It was one of the neighborhood kids. Firemen rescued this soot-covered teenager after he was stuck in the chimney, get this, for seven hours. He told cops his soccer ball bounced in there last night, and he went in to get it. And someone walking by early this morning heard the boy screaming and called police. Thank goodness the boy was taken to the hospital, and fortunately, his injuries are minor. Get another soccer ball. <laughs> My father used to have a saying, rich or poor, it's nice to have money. The mother of Jennifer Lopez tonight knows that very well. With Lady Luck smiling down on her, Guadalupe Lopez, that's her on the left, hit the slots and hit the jackpot in Atlantic City Saturday night. Her winnings, $2.4 million. <laughs> Word has it, the 58-year-old will use the bucks to start a college fund for her grandchildren. Good for her. No such good fortune on Wall Street today. A down day, and there's word of fewer jobs out there. Jill Bennett at the Amex with the Tales Force. Jill? Afternoon, Bill. Well, companies may not be putting out the help wanted signs, but they aren't cutting as many jobs either. Layoffs fell in March to 68,000. Now, that is the lowest level in nine months, according to a survey by outplacement firm Challenger Gray and Christmas. Companies saying the heavy job cutting we've seen over the past three years seems to be slowing down, but there is still a reluctance by a lot of bosses to create new jobs. Now, the biggest job cuts last month were found in the financial services industry, followed by the telecom sector. That was a distant second. Take a check now on those closing market numbers, and you can see how everything wrapped up. We did have a bit of a warning coming out of Nokia, which knocked back technology stocks. The Dow finishing higher by 12 points, and the Nasdaq lower by 19 to 2059. And that is all for now. Live at Amex, I'm Jill Bennett, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. All right, thank you. Jill, well, time now for checking some of the stories we're working on for Eyewitness News at 6. For that, let's go to Liz Cho in the Eyewitness Newsroom. Hello, Liz. Hi there, Sade. Well, coming up at 6 o'clock tonight, we have new information about how a suicide captured on an NYPD surveillance camera ended up on a pornographic website. The latest on the police investigation coming up. Also at 6, the blue flu hits a local jail, creating some big problems. In New York City, thousands of trees die each year, which the city pays to replace. But because of a growing political squabble, new trees for this season may be in jeopardy. And in tonight's extra, the benefits of video games, how those skills could make for a better surgeon. We'll tell you how those stories and much more coming up tonight on Eyewitness News at 6. Bill and Shade, back to you guys in the studio. All right, thank you, Liz. And we want to bring you another brush fire. We had a brush fire in Queens, Staten Island. Now there is a very bad brush fire in Newark. Let's go to Shannon Stone right now, who is live at Newscopter 7 with more. Shannon, this is another bad one. Yes, yeah, Shade, you can see it's a tremendously smoky scene here. Now you can see some fire just peeking up after Route 78. This is just on the north side of 78. If you know this area, this is a mess of roadways where 1 and 9 come in. The New Jersey Turnpike extension comes in all in front of 78, right in front of Newark Airport. Now we're showing you this. We just want to pull back a little to give you an idea of the smoky situation that, that is going on. Now just my pilot, Captain Paul Smith, pointing this out to me as well. I just want to bring you a little bit south. We have yet another rush fire starting and we have been mentioning all day there are very high winds but the other thing you have to consider we also have very low humidity so everything is completely ripe for these rush fires to start and we certainly have a huge one here in newark you can expect this to start affecting traffic 
very, very soon. Reporting live over in Newark, Shannon Stone, Channel 7, Eyewitness News. So at least mm. four brush fires yeah, going on right now. Yeah, four. Wow. We'll be right back. Tomorrow on Eyewitness News this morning, how music is breathing new life into a South Bronx middle school. Watch Eyewitness News tomorrow morning, starting at 5 a.m. When Lincoln LS went head-to-head -head with Cadillac CTS, LS was the one turning heads with more standard horsepower than CTS, more interior room, plus power-adjustable pedals that put you closer to LS performance. And where did we turn... New state assistants help Varda Shamban build her business. New job training helped Jorge Gonzalez grow with his company. And a new commitment to education means some of the best schools in America are right here in New Jersey. New state incentives, new training, and the most new jobs in the Northeast. If you're looking to build your business, find out what's new in New Jersey. At least four brush fires in the area. High winds, low humidity, only about 17%. This one in Newark. Shannon Sohn above the scene with the latest. Shannon? Yeah, Bill, this is just on the north side of Route 78, and seconds ago, we could see flames just licking up almost as high as that billboard in your screen. Now, what you're looking at is the intersection of 78 and Route 21. Now, it's certainly starting to affect traffic. We just want to bring this picture back to give you an idea of the smoky situation. Now, you said it. There are high winds. There is low humidity. It is just making tinderbox conditions ripe for these brush fires. Now, the other thing that we want to point out, and this has been a major problem all afternoon long, these sparks are sort of flying off, and they're starting brush fires in secondary areas. So if you go south towards Newark Airport, there's little brush fires along the railroad tracks there as well. So it's just an absolute mess today for firefighters in every single borough. We've had fires now in Queens, in Brooklyn, in Staten Island. Now we have moved over to New Jersey. It looks like this one is starting to die down a little, so at least a little bit of good news there. But the fire department trying to get to the scene to take care of this. Reporting live over Route 78 in Newark, Shannon Sohn, Channel 7, Eyewitness News. All right, thank you, Shannon. Sam, we've been talking about these high winds. Where are they right now? Everywhere. I mean, across the area. They're a little less than they were by about 10 miles an hour yesterday, but still extremely high winds, and, and it is exactly what you would use to start a fire, yeah. dry twigs, mm -hmm. and you got the wind going, so everything's like kicking up out there today. We'll try to calm that down overnight tonight, and a little bit of sunshine, some very dry air outside. Let's walk to the wall. By the way, Ritter, welcome to the 5 o'clock broadcast. Thank hitting, you, sir. Hitting all shows today, yeah. are we? Here's, uh, here's what it looks like. You this lost your mic. <laughs> oh, I did? Yes. Take mine. Where is it? Wait, no, oh, no, wait. There. Hang on. Got it. Good. Well, you know, if, look at the sky shot while I uh, fix my microphone. Can you hear it now? Yeah. Is that better? Yeah. It is now on the jacket. Hi. Hi. Uh, let's talk wind gusts <laughs> now that you can hear me, and I won't sign. Um, here's where they are. Strong and gusty in all locations. 40 miles per hour Kennedy Airport today. 38 miles per hour out toward the island. 39 miles per hour toward Newark. 32, 39. These are down by about 10 miles per hour from where they were yesterday, but it's a constant, steady, strong wind above 20 miles per hour, gusting up to 30. So again, it's moving these brush fires right along. 34, 35 degrees is an overnight low temperature tonight. 36 toward the island. Newark comes in at 42 degrees. This is so much better than the way we started this morning and yesterday morning. 56, 57, find 64 in central New Jersey, 63 toward Trenton for the high temperature tomorrow, which means we're getting some sunshine in. Now, overnight tonight, quick-moving, clipper-like system dives out of the Great Lakes. We'll bring some clouds and maybe a little light sprinkle. If you want to time the sprinkle out, it's really going to be somewhere around daybreak tomorrow where you're going to get that much of a sprinkle and not much more than that. It's not a rainy night, but there are some clouds that are already going to be getting into the area from western areas within the next couple of hours. And then tomorrow, you'll start with a cloudy day, and it'll have that moist feeling because there was just a sprinkle around. And then it'll move right out, and we'll open up the afternoon with some good amounts of sunshine. That ought to break open those numbers and take us right to 58 degrees. The potential for getting to 60 is right there. 
coastal areas will be slightly cooler. It's still going to be kind of a gusty day because we've got that big system moving through. Here's a look at your five day. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, your forecast days. Breezy is how we'd call it tomorrow, so even less wind than there was today. And uh, again, remember that sprinkle is an early morning thing. Now, Thursday starts dry, but ends up with some clouds. This is the next system to move through that probably delivers a little drizzle. This isn't a big rainmaker either for us. And uh, Friday afternoon ends up being dry. 58 on Thursday, 54 on Friday, Saturday 54. Sunday could be a showery day at 54. So right now, if I had to pick the best day of the weekend, it's going to be Saturday. Nice, dry, beautiful, sunny, 54 beautiful. degrees. Yeah. And then a couple Spring. of sprinkles on, yeah, and then a couple Spring. sprinkles on Sunday. Okay. Fantastic. Thanks, Sam. Thank you, Sam. Because of the brush fires and the breaking news, we can't bring you Lauren Glassberg's story about how to choose the right prom dress. I'm told we're going to bring it to you, hopefully, this week. Yeah. Well, helping newborns grow stronger. Up next, someone's on call with a new treatment to feed and strengthen premature babies when we come back. If you're born premature. Next at 6, a man's suicide caught on tape and put on the internet. Who's behind the leak? Eyewitness News just found a shocking answer. Plus, why video games are great practice if you want your child to be a doctor. Next at 6 on Eyewitness News. We're the biggest show on Broadway. You know what surprises people most about Jenny Craig's ultimate choice program? It's less than I used to spend on fast food and lattes. It's so convenient. It's almost like having a personal chef. Jenny Craig's ultimate choice gives you personal support with simple ways to lose weight even when you dine out or travel. Do you know what losing 50 pounds feels like? I lost 111 pounds. Now I'm half the mom and twice as much fun. For the first time ever, get a free 14-day trial plus the cost of food. Final week, call 1-800-JENNY-20 now. Wednesday, get the lowest prices of the season at Macy's One Day Sale. No coupons to clip, just the lowest prices of the season. Jewelry, 30 to 50%, plus an extra 20% off selections. Career and casual sportswear for her, 30 to 50% off. Men's suits, sport coats, and separates, 50 to 65% off. Look for our lowest prices of the season at Macy's One Day Sale. Wednesday, shop 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. This cold. My situses feel like they're gonna explode. IL-5. My allergies have my situses all stuffed up. IL-5. Now tell them where you feel the pressure. Yeah. IL-5. Come on. Sinus misery? Get Sudafed. Nothing stronger at relieving even your worst sinus symptoms. Not even a prescription. I'm so congested. Sudafed. IL-5. Sudafed. Prescription strength sinus relief. And for a sinus headache, try maximum strength Sudafed. Sinus headache. This week, Jeopardy! covers everyone from rabbis to prime ministers. Watch Jeopardy! Tonight at 7 on ABC7. Caring for premature babies is always a delicate process, but a new way of feeding them may help the infants grow stronger. 7's on call with Dr. Jay Adlersberg. Baby Gerald got an early start to life. He was 2 pounds, 10 ounces, but when he came out, he was, came out crying. As a preemie, Jarrell has one goal. If you're born prematurely, your ticket to going home is basically gaining weight. But that's not always easy. When babies are in the womb, they swallow amniotic fluid. The fluid helps the digestive system develop properly. When babies are born prematurely, they no longer swallow amniotic fluid and can't tolerate breast milk or formula yet. Now a new option is being tested. Dr. Darlene Calhoun helped develop artificial amniotic fluid. The solution has growth factors to help intestines digest food sooner. Our goal is if you can go on to feed faster, this may ultimately shorten the baby's hospitalization. Dr. Calhoun says if every preemie shortened their hospital stay by just one day, it would save $250 million. But there's more than a financial gain. I think it gave him an extra boost to get started. Three weeks ago, Jarrell was given the fluid as part of a clinical trial. Mom admits she was nervous. Like, no, no. You know, he's not going to be a research project, but he listened to what they said, thank goodness. Jarrell is now three and a half pounds and growing. Who are you? 
perfect but little and waiting for one more big step. To go home. <laughs> This is Dr. Jay Adlersberg, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. Oh, sweet little baby. Well, for more information, log on to our website at 7online.com. And that will do it for this 5 o'clock edition of Eyewitness News. I'm Sade Berenois. Eyewitness News at 6 starts now. This is the News Leader, ABC 7 Eyewitness News.